Hello, Mike Ballard with Archangel Manufacturing. I'm here to do a quick video update on the Mosin Nagan stock um, to give everybody a, a little update what's uh, going on with the uh, shipping and uh, problems we've had in production. I just want to get everybody up to speed uh, so you'll know exactly what's happening and uh, how, we're gonna, how we're correcting the problems that we uh, do have. Uh, first off, I'd like to answer some questions people have asked um, just so I get them out of the way. People are asking, is the stock California legal? Yes, it is. It's a bolt action gun, so it doesn't have any of the assault weapons uh, um, issues uh, that other semi autos do. So, bolt action gun, it is California legal. Uh, the stock does weigh eight ounces more than the original stock, and all the weight's back here in the back. So, um, what's nice is it actually balances the rifle right there at the front of the magwell. So, it makes it for a nice handling. Uh, number three, tan stock. People are asking, hey, what's that tan stock there? Well, the tan stock is actually the root of a lot of the problem that we had with our initial shipment. Um, we decided to sample some tan. Um, we are actually going to do tan and green. Uh, but when we did do the sample, uh, the material, the tan material, flowed a lot better than the uh, black. So it actually got into the inner workings of the tool and caused problems. And that's why we shipped towards the mid of May, actually mid, uh, May 15th, the very last day of the uh, launch window there. Uh, rather than May 1st is what we'd originally anticipated because we had to do some tooling repair um, and material clean out because the thing was packed full of material. So that slowed us down a little bit. But um, rest assured, the tan one is coming. We've got another set of tooling finished uh, that's going to be just for the colors. We're going to have uh, desert tan and um, olive drab green, OD green, um, we're coming along as well. Uh, but anyway, those questions out of the way, um, I'd like to answer some questions here about what's going on with the stock, magazines, and that kind of stuff. Um, well, uh, the magazine we've had a, an issue with, um, all the sample magazines that I've had and I've used have been perfect. We haven't had any issues at all with them. Uh, but the problem is when we went to production, uh, there's a cooling fixture that these magazines go on to right after the machine. Uh, well, for my small sample run of you know, 10 pieces or 5 pieces, whatever I use, there was no issue because they stayed nice and cold. But when they were running production, these uh, the uh, fixtures got really warm. But long story short, is it caused the magazine to come off looking good. But then over the course of a few days after that, they were they're collapsing in the center here. So um, it's causing drag on the round. And so we got people saying, ah, oh, the spring is too weak. It's uh, it's the magazine's crap. It's not. This is not a crap magazine. I totally stand behind this. Uh, I've been shooting these things for the last three months. And they work great. I mean, I do a lot of shooting, and um, everybody that shot them with me has had nothing but good things to say about them. It's a good polymer. Um, it, it might be one of our issues is that we're using our good polymer, uh, and uh, it does have the tendency to want to shrink down around uh, things, like you know when we use it for a rifle stock, uh, it, it's tight, but then it wants to form fit to your action, which is a, a benefit, you know, when you're trying to get accuracy. But we use the same nylon for this and we're having this shrinkage issue at the center of the magazine. So um, I did a bunch of testing uh, with different fixture sizes, different heat settings uh, for a secondary op on the oven. So we, we basically have some big ovens here. Uh, these things get reheated to a melting point and then we get a fixture stuck on there and then that allows us to uh, recool these and get them to where they're not gonna shrink up. And I did all this testing uh, to where once it's fixtured, um, and then I did the, all different methods. I took um, all these pieces and then heated them in the oven again to see what would happen. And the, the ones that didn't collapse back in once they were reheated are the ones that took a set. So that's the method that we're using. And it's actually heating it, putting it on a fixture in the oven. When it comes out, that piece gets thrown into to water to cool to where it takes a set. Um, so we, we've, we've discovered how to fix the, in the magazines that we have here in stock. And then at the same time, we're making new fixtures for the actual production. So the, the new magazines that are, that are going to come out after this first production run are all going to be on the money. There won't be any issues with them. Now, I will tell you right now, you can you know, send them, your magazines into us, get a hold of tech support, get an RMA number. You can, if you're having a magazine that's rubbing, uh, we'll replace it. You know, we're going to stand behind our warranty no matter what. We offer a limited lifetime warranty on all of our stuff. So this is definitely something on our end. We will fix it. We'll make it right. But I'm going to also give you a way to fix this yourself at home. If you don't want to send it in, you don't want to go through the hassle. There's actually a very easy fix for it. Okay, what you need to do is you need to take your magazine plate off the bottom of the magazine. And you're going to do a, a quick disassembly. Make your spring, lock plate, 
and you got your follower. And this is actually one of the magazines that I got returned. You can see this, how the follower inside isn't wanting to run smoothly through it because it's tight in the middle in here, okay? So what you want to do is you want to take your follower. Now, the follower has got a top and a bottom. The bottom is opened up. The top is solid where the round goes. What you want to do is you want to take the solid top and put it towards the front of the magazine. And if you look on the magazine here, there's uh, three ribs. Let's see if that'll focus on there. Get the large front one. That's the one that you're going to be interested in. It shrinks here in the center. That center rib is what makes contact with the round and the follower. But what you're going to be doing here is you're going to concentrate on that front piece. And so you're taking the top of the follower, putting it towards the front of the magazine, and you're going to push this in there all the way through the center, okay? So what it should look like is you should have a bow at the top, and it should be bowed at the bottom, just like that. And you can see your follower inside there, okay? You take this and you throw it in an oven at set for 225 for about 15 minutes. Now you want to monitor this. I mean, obviously, you know, you're, you're heating plastic. You don't want to turn it up too high. You don't want it to melt. You want to put it on something that's, you know, probably a piece of cardboard would be good or a, a cookie sheet. But keep an eye on it. You don't want to, you know, don't want to get out of control on this. But uh, 225 Fahrenheit uh, for 15 minutes. You're going to uh, get the material. It's probably going to get up to somewhere around 180 to 190 degrees. You want to carefully remove it with oven mitts and throw it in the water. Throw it in some cool water, okay? And that's going to make it take a set. Um, at that point in time, you're going to you know, let it cool for you know, five minutes or so in the water. Take the, push your follower out like that. And then you're going to dry it off really good. This is a metal spring clip that can actually get water underneath. So you're going to want to spray some WD-40 or other uh, lubricant on this uh, spring so it doesn't get any corrosion. It is coated, but you want to treat it just like a firearm part. If you have compressed air, you can blow out all this stuff, make sure it's nice and dry. Okay? And then you should have a bowed out magazine in the center. You're going to go ahead and do your reassembly. You're going to make sure that the uh, top spring is facing the front of the magazine. So once again here, the top pigtail, the very top edge of that, and also some of these springs initially were bent like this. You want to make sure that this top, this top pigtail here is parallel. I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see that good. But that top ramp there should go towards the front of the mag, okay? Then you put your lock plate and your fork plate back on. All right. So then you got your magazine reassembled. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and load three rounds into this one. Now, even though this one was a return, this magazine actually works still. <laughs> I haven't had any problems with it testing it in mine. So it actually goes all the way down, all the way up and run. So even though this one rubs a little tiny bit, it might be something that when it's, com it's compounded when it's inside the, uh, the, mag the mag well. But once you heat it and do that process, it'll fix this magazine and make it work good for you. The same thing goes for the five round magazine if you're having problems with it. Springs the same way, okay? And then also, the other issue we've had is some of these guns uh, have a um, interrupter. Actually, all of them have the interrupter. But if you can see inside there, it's got the little uh, tab on that side that sticks out. And when the action is cycled, that thing moves out of the way. That's initially how the Russians, um, or I guess the English, uh, conquered the, or French, conquered the uh, rim lock that was occurring um, for the uh, rounds, the rim rounds. So that's something inherent to the system. But what's happening is, the interrupter itself is different on some models. So if you look from the bottom of the weapon and when you close the action, if that thing doesn't pull out of the way, there's an issue with contact on the inside of the stock. Now, um, almost every one I've assembled hasn't had a problem. The only one has been this Russian M44. So um, all the Chinese ones, we haven't had a problem. Most of the 9130s I've had haven't had a problem, but a lot of M44s were made from 9130, so I don't know if they change the interrupter or what, but what's not in the instructions that I'm going to show you here 
is on the stock itself, there's this edge right here where the interrupter can make contact. I'm gonna make sure you can see that. Now you can see on, on this one here, I've actually removed some material there with the grinder, a little Dremel, in order to make clearance for the interrupter to move out of the way. So if you're having uh, contact with your interrupter and you're not able to get your uh, rounds to go past the interrupter, it might not be a magazine problem. It could be that you need to do a little bit of trimming there to make sure that interrupter can move. And it's a real easy test. Just look at the bottom, rifle unloaded, of course, and move your bolt handle closed. And you should see that interrupter move a little over a sixteenth of an inch out of the way. The rounds should get past it. If you're having a problem where you're cycling it and the rounds aren't coming past that interrupter, then it could, this could, that could be your issue. So you just want to make sure that there's room for that. The other issue is um, the trigger itself. When you uh, cycle the action, you have to pull the, the trigger back, of course, to have a firing pin fall. Well, these triggers are uh, machined all different ways. Some weapons you drop them in, it, the, the, the firing pin will fall um, with a quarter of an inch left at the end. Some of them, though, you get all the way back and the trigger will make contact with the trigger guard before the firing pin falls. Now, don't worry, there's an easy fix for this, I mean, it's actually a pretty good thing to have um, happen to you because what will happen is you remove a little bit of material from the back of the trigger guard just where the trigger touches the trigger guard. If you pull it back and see where it's making contact, just come in here with a Dremel. I might want to take your action out, but if you're, you know, if you're good with it, remove a little bit of material from behind the trigger guard and keep doing that until the firing pin falls. What that's going to do is it's going to act like a trigger stop. So what will happen is you pull the trigger back, the pin will fall right at the stop. And so you're going to have a, a really good trigger for accuracy because you're not going to have a lot of take up after the firing pin falls. It'll, it'll make for a more accurate rifle. Um, but what I uh, do suggest you do is take three layers of paper. Uh, that's going to end up being about nine thousandths of an inch. So three layers of paper and putting it in there, dremeling material away, put the, put the layers of paper in there and test it with those layers of paper in there. So the firing pin should fall, but there still should be some space. So then when you remove the paper, the firing pin will fall about nine thousandths before the trigger touches the stop. And that way if any debris gets in there, it's still gonna fire, or if the you know, heat causes it to heat or shrink or, or expand, it's not gonna cause your weapon not to fire. You wanna use that paper as a shim to make sure you've got enough uh, material removed. So uh, between those two things should be good. Now another item too, it's about the tools over. No, I didn't. Um, this rear bolt. Um, the nut that this bolt screws into is a very tight thread, okay? We wanted it to be that way because we've had some issues with tolerances. This bolt is actually a 55 degree Whitworth thread. It's not a standard thread. We had to have these bolts custom made. Also the nut. So when you screw this bolt down, you're gonna screw it down and you're gonna feel like it comes to a stop or, oh, I'm, I'm cross-threading it or something. You're not. You're gonna come down to the stop, you're gonna feel it, give your wrench a little bit more torque and you'll realize, oh yeah, it's still turning. Keep turning it, keep turning it. When it actually comes to its real stop, it's gonna go and it's gonna stop. And at that point also, it's gonna be low enough that the bolt will indeed ride over the top of the bolt. If it's not riding over top of the bolt, the bolt probably isn't tight enough. You don't have to grind the bolt down, you just have to tighten it deeper. You, trust me on this. When you get it all the way down to the bottom, people say, oh, well, you know, you're, the, the bolt's going to wear out. No, no, you're basically forming the thread a tiny bit as you install it. I, I do recommend you use some uh, 242 block, uh, number 242 blue Loctite. Uh, it's going to act as a lubricant, plus it's going to thread lock but you shouldn't have an issue with it. I, I do recommend blue 242 for the front screw as well. Um, we've listed as five, 55 inch pounds, but you know you can go to 65 inch pounds torque on these bolts um, and you'll have a real good solid um, shooting rifle. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other issues here um, that I haven't addressed. Uh, right now um, we have about a thousand stocks that haven't shipped. Um, you know, the, the, people might still be waiting on. We stopped shipping them because of the magazine issue, but uh, the new fixture for fixing the magazines that we have in stock is gonna be done today. Um, so we should be shipping again by tomorrow. Um, and you know, at a thousand stocks, these are already made, so it's pretty much as fast as we can package those 
and get them shipped out, all the pre-orders will be out. I'm, I'm anticipating we're going to have all the rest of the pre-orders out by this week. You know, fingers crossed because you know there's been enough things that pop up. Uh, but we do want to make sure that you know what's going on. And uh, also there's been a question about, oh, you guys are selling it at full retail for a pre-order. And I got so much flack. You know, if I could take this back and not do the pre-order, I would have done it because of so much, uh, you know, animosity about the fact that we are charging full retail. Now, the, the reason we do it, and I'm going to make it really clear, is that we don't undersell our dealers. You know, our retail um, segment is very small compared to everything else that we do. Uh, distributors and dealer we encourage you to go to your dealer now people want you know, we, we got people coming to us we don't care we don't care we want to we want to get a stock right away when can I get one what's the soonest I go well you know we can do uh, maybe do a pre-order everybody was all for it but we have to charge full retail we were not going to undercut our dealers uh, there's no reason for us to do it um, if you don't like the full retail price wait you know I, I, have, I have all the um, you know I, I encourage you wait uh, wait till the uh, distributors and dealers get it, and you can get it then for for less. You know, they, it's it's a it's a common fact that things sell for less than the MSRP, and that's just the way it goes. Um, but we're not going to undercut our dealers. And some small mom and pop shops, they buy their uh, product and they sell it really close to MSRP because they need to. They got to make their money. They're not doing large volume, so we're not going to undercut these guys that are trying to make a living selling our products. We just won't do it. Um, any other questions, you can leave comments. I'll try to answer them, but like I said, I've been completely bombed with uh, questions to answer, and it's much easier for me to just do a video update every once in a while. I do try to answer questions, but I am reading all the comments. So I see all these comments that people are making, and uh, we are on top of everything. We're making sure that uh, these stocks are gonna be good, and that um, you know everything's gonna be right. Uh, this is my baby. You know, I, um, I really enjoy shooting this stock. I, I'm a shooter. I have not had any problems with the magazines in the field. I, I would definitely use this for um, a lot of different, um, a lot of different types of shooting. Uh, I totally trust in the system, and I think uh, you're all going to trust in it too. It's just a matter of getting these small bugs worked out on the uh, the first uh, production run. Uh, normally, when we do a, a new product release, uh, we have a lot of resources available to us, and this year we just didn't. Um, we've got one tech guy right now, and he's overloaded. He's got a lot of things going on. We need to get some more guys, but it's hard to find good tech help that knows what they're talking about, you know, and that's going to represent our company correctly. So we are looking for somebody, um, but you know, until then, you know, please just hang with us on the, the tech support. We know we're trying to answer questions as fast as we can uh, to get back to you um, and uh, get all this stuff out. Um, this this uh, country right now is just, uh, it seems like the world's upside down uh, with everybody trying to outlaw firearms and uh, get in, and, and people that are having issues with their, um, you know, their representatives not representing the people. So um, we're, we're hoping right now that um, you know things are going to turn around and we can get back to normal and producing uh, fine products for you folks. So, um, it, like I said, any other questions, please just leave comments for me. And if I forgot something, I'm really sorry. And you know, once again, I, or actually, I'd like to apologize to everybody for this delay. Um, I, I know that when you get a new product uh, and you spend $200 for it, you expect everything to be right. Um, and you know, I really thought that we had it when, before we shipped, but these magazines have been a little bit of an issue. So um, we do want to apologize and uh, leave comments. And thank you very much for your support of uh, ProMagam Archangel Manufacturing. Thank you very much.